three up, three down here, guys. And look, once the regular season starts, we're changing three up, three down. That was been, you know, that's been the plan this entire time. So these are the last couple of weeks of three up, three down, as we know it. Once the season gets rolling, we're going to focus on a pitcher. Each of us are going to give a pitcher who we think these listeners should focus in on more and keep an eye out for. So right now, it's still the status quo, so to speak, pick up a, a topic that we kind of want to shed some light on. So, uh, David, how about how about you lead us off here? You know, I think it's interesting, even though a lot of the, the you know, and this is just coming. I'm just thinking of this right now. So I'm going to throw it on you guys. Uh, the, the rules changes that aren't happening yet, but are going to happen. You know, we, I even saw something on the MLB network where Mike Zanino was using an earpiece already and he could, you know, we're already going to the catcher signals, then really trying to speed up the game in that regard. And he, he had kind of favorable reviews of it. He's got a wristband. He can buzz the pitch right to the pitcher. There's no signs, especially with men on base. He said it was a noticeable increase in the pace of play along with a pitcher's clock, you know, a hitter's clock. I'd rather call it the hitter's <laughs> clock rather than the pitcher's clock, but I'm biased. Uh, the bigger bases, the, the, the infielders and the, the banning of the shift is going to come. So all the, you know, I'm trying to trying to think about how the impact collectively of all these rules together and which ones will actually have the most impact. Uh, I really do believe now that the crispness of the game, the pace of play can really be impacted by some of these rules collectively together. And it's going to be interesting to follow some of these experiments in the minor leagues and not to mention, not the least of which is robo umps whether you like it or not it's coming i don't know exactly when it's going to be implemented but it's coming so uh, you know get ready well the time to do it is in the minor leagues you know put your foot in the pool see how it goes it's a low stakes environment to test things out and see what sticks and what doesn't i i saw the the news of what zanina was doing and, and the contraptions that they the rays were using do you think other teams are going to be using that stuff during exhibition play or is this just the, the Rays kind of being out in front of everything? I think there was uh, at least one other team that they mentioned in that report on the MLB network that was experimenting with it uh, this spring as well to see, you know, to kind of work through the kinks and see how, you know, how it came through. Now Zanino is a, a veteran catcher. So yeah, I, 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 he has credibility and he had pretty, pretty positive reviews on it in terms of, Let's go get in the box, mm -hmm. swing the bat. And in particular with men on base, we've seen that's when the game really tends to slow down. It naturally slows down anyway. If you've got a, a running threat, you know, a stolen base threat or pickoff moves or things like that. But with a man on second base in recent history with all the espionage going on and sign stealing and gamesmanship or what's gamesmanship and, and what's technologically, you know, uh, espionage uh, so to speak so yeah maybe that's an answer that's when the game really slows down you get multiple signs infielders are moving around catcher doesn't put down the right sign the pitcher shakes them off that really slows down the game now you've got to go through a whole nother sequence of signs and yeah that, that's interesting to me to, to attack that part of the game and and see if if it really does help and if it helps the crispness and the overall pace of play then you know i'm kind of for it at this point all right, James, what do you have? Three up, three down. The Braves signing Kenley Jansen, uh, a, a mainstay of the Dodgers during their run in the, uh, in the 2010s and early 2020s, 350 career saves, and now he's going to Atlanta. It'll be weird to see him in a different uniform, but the Braves bullpen is going to be absolutely loaded. They were such a big part of their championship run in October, and now just running down the list, Kenley Jansen, Will Smith, Tyler Matzik, our old pal, AJ Minter, Luke Jackson. And they also added Colin McHugh, who I think is a fantastic pickup as well. You put their top six up against pretty much any of the other top six relief uh, relievers uh, on the depth chart against any team. Uh, the Braves are going to be formidable in late in the game. Loaded pen. Couldn't agree more. I thought Colin McHugh was arguably one of the biggest steals of the off season to, to whatever team he went to. And he ends up going to Atlanta. And look, the NL East, despite the Mets making huge moves, that division is going to be tight, in my opinion, between the Mets' big moves, their change in leadership with Buck now in the manager spot, but the Braves offsetting Freddie Freeman's departure with Matt Olson's addition. 
adding to the bullpen. And then the Phillies feels like they're just going to slug their way to the postseason. They made some additions to their bullpen, but here we go with an expanded postseason. They could probably hit their way into October. It's, it's a great point, and it just shows you the pressure a lot of these organizations are under on, on keeping up with the Joneses, so to speak. If you're the Philadelphia Phillies and, you you know, you got to contend with the Braves and what James just said about their incredible bullpen, you got a tough division, you got the Mets, you got a new sheriff in town on the ownership side, and Steve Cohen, he actually has his own tax threshold named after him already. So, yeah, if you're the Phillies, what are you going to do? Well, you gotta, you got you to catch up. You got to make some hay, and then – they're going to try to slug their way through it with Schwarber and Castellanos. Uh, it will be fun to watch offensively with Bryce Harper right in the middle of that crew. And the, you know, Bryce Harper looks like a pretty good signing right now. All of a sudden, after sure does. all that talk, his average annual value, I, you, you know, we'll see on the back end. But wow, he's he's lived up to every bit of his end of the bargain. Uh, has Bryce Harper? So yeah, they're going to be a fun offensive team to watch this year. I mentioned Matt Olson's name. He was traded last week to Atlanta guys did you hear about the curse of Trader Joe's in Arizona last week no no okay so here we go oh wait wait the, maybe I did hear something well, about the, the, the John Boy media crew they yes. they were out in Arizona at the Topps Bun House and I mean we, we set up a whole pad with a bunch of games there is ping pong blitz ball there is chip and putt uh cornhole Mario Kart tournaments and a bunch of players came by the John Boy media crew, whether it was Trevor Pluth, Jimmy and Jake, Chris Rose, Joe's McFly. They went out, you know, to, to spring training sites. Jerry Blevins was there as well. And between some of the players coming over and the crew going out to spring training sites, Joe's McFly, part of the John Boy media crew, I think he had the cursed handshake because – you take a look at the players that came over and interacted with, with Joe's. You had Matt Olson coming over. Matt Chapman came over. You had Amir Garrett come over. And then Joe's went out to Reds camp. He may have taken the last picture with Jesse Winker as a Cincinnati Red. Joe's poses with Winker. And maybe 15 minutes later, he's dealt over to Seattle. The other guys come over to the house. And within 24 to 36 hours, they're out of town as well. It was wild. I think the last player that came over, Taylor Trammell, the, the young outfielder for the Mariners, everyone was joking, hey, do you want Joe's to stay on the other side of the house? Or, you know, is there, uh, is, is there a situation that you're not happy with in Seattle? We can arrange a meet here. So a lot of players came over. The Whit Merrifields, Evan Longoria, our, our former guest, Josh Hader, came over. And, yeah, Joe's had a uh, – he had some type of power there that, that was going on. He had four players that he met and they were subsequently traded within like a day wild stuff. So he gets the nickname trader Joe's and we're, we're probably not going to see anything like that anymore because of the, the nature of this off season coming out of the lockout, big moves being made in March. It was just a, a, a whirlwind of everything kind of combusting in mid March here in the baseball world. It, that just tells me too that John Boy Media, wherever they are, is the place to be. You know, you've yeah. drawn some big stars, some big names around. Things are going to happen. So yeah, that's that's impressive uh, that you drew in that that those biggest stars. You know, to wherever you set up camp out there. So yes, another another uh, a notch in the John Boy Media post as they continue their ascent. It was wild having like Amir Garrett come over. He came over with T.J. Antone another pitcher ground ball specialist for the reds. And I mean, they were playing ping pong late at night and like less than 12 hours. Th that was like the morning talk. Yo, did you just see Amir Garrett got traded to Kansas city? He was, he was just here. Wild. 